let us start with Tresca criteria. Okay. What this criteria tells us is the maximum shear stress in the body which is given by 1 half maximum of absolute value of sigma 1 minus sigma 2, absolute value of sigma 2 minus sigma 3, absolute value of sigma 3 minus sigma 1 should be lesser than or equal to kappa where this is a material parameter just like Young's modulus or Poisson's ratio. Okay. So, basically now how do you find this metal parameter? You have to do some experiment to find this metal parameter. So, typically we have been using unilateral experiments to find the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So, we will use the same experiment to find this parameter. Okay. So, let us say the body began to yield or began to fail at a stress when this unilateral stress reached sigma y okay, called as the yield stress of the material. Okay. So, let sigma y represent uniaxial stress when yielding or failure occurs failure here means yielding essentially occurs in the material. Okay. Now, what is this kappa, how is this kappa related to sigma y is the question. Okay. For uniaxial state of stress, I know that the stress tensor is given by sigma uniaxial 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. Okay. So, for this the principal values sigma 1 is sigma uniaxial and sigma 2 and sigma 3 are 0. Okay. So, the maximum shear stress tau max is given by sigma uniaxial by 2. Okay. So, the kappa is when this uniaxial stress reaches sigma y. So, kappa would be sigma y by 2. When the uniaxial stress reaches sigma y, the metal has failed. So, that is my limiting value of that kappa value. Okay. So, kappa has to be sigma y by 2. Okay. Now, having found kappa, now I can use this to estimate what will be the failure load in shear. For example, I do a torsion experiment. I know that sigma for torsion experiment is given by 0 0 sigma x z 0 0 sigma y z sigma x z sigma y z 0 right. Okay. In particular if I am interested in finding a point where it is parallel to where the shear stress acts parallel to the y axis for example, at a point along the x axis then I will have this goes to 0 and I will have only that. Okay. And let me say this is tau and let me say this is tau, the shear stress acting, magnitude of the shear stress acting at that location. Okay. So, I have a state of stress which is pure shear. So, you know that the Mohr circle for this is centered about the origin and it has a diameter, it has a radius of tau. Okay. So, for this case on the Mohr circle you can read out that sigma 1 would be tau, sigma 2 would be minus tau and sigma 3 would be 0 or the principal stresses for this stress state okay. and for this stress state tau max would be 1 half maximum of 2 tau, tau and tau. Right. Okay. So, this will be maximum of that will be 2 tau, 2 tau divided by 2 will be tau. Okay. So, this has to be lesser than or equal to sigma y by 2. 
right ok. So, now you, you have found the condition on the shear stress in terms of the uniaxial yield stress that you found from a uniaxial experiment. So, this tau in terms of torque is given by T by J into R where R is the radial location of the point ok. I am interested in the maximum shear stress. So, it will be R max the maximum value of the radial location this has to be lesser than sigma y by 2 or my torque must be less than or equal to sigma y by 2 r max into j ok. That gives you the limiting torque that a circular shaft can see when it obeys a Tresca criteria ok. Now, I can find kappa not necessarily from a uniaxial experiment I can find kappa even from a shear experiment right. I can do the ulta ulta now. I can use the shear experiment to find the kappa value and uniaxial experiment to find what is the limiting uniaxial stress ok. Then let us see what happens ok. Now say I am giving you that tau y is the maximum shear stress before yielding occurred ok. Then I have tau max for pure shear is given by tau ok this should be lesser than or equal to tau y. So, your kappa this is equal to your kappa ok. In that case my uniaxial if I go back and predict my uniaxial uh, state of stress then I know that tau max for uniaxial state of stress is this tau max for uniaxial state of stress is this this should be limited to tau y now. So, basically if I use this to predict the uniaxial state of stress that is possible tau max for uniaxial state of stress is sigma uni by 2 must be lesser than or equal to tau y ok. In other words this implies sigma uniaxial stress must be lesser than or equal to 2 times tau y ok. So, I can use any one experiment to estimate kappa once I estimated kappa I can use that estimated value of kappa to predict the stresses in any other state of stress ok ok. Next we are interested in plotting the failure envelope for the Tresca criteria ok. Let us assume that the state of stress is plain I am interested in plotting the failure surface for Tresca criteria ok. What I am interested is not the general case, but plain state of stress plain stress state. So, sigma is given by sigma x x, sigma x y 0, sigma x y, sigma y y 0, 0, 0, 0. This I can equally represent as sigma 1, 0, 0, 0, sigma 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, ok. For this tau max is given by 1 half maximum value of absolute value of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 absolute value of sigma 1 absolute value of sigma 2 ok. Now what will this be? This will be equal to sigma 1 ok absolute value of sigma 1 if sigma 1 is less than sigma 2 and sigma 1 is greater than 0 and sigma 2 is greater than 0 or sigma 1 is less than 0 and sigma 2 is less than 0 and sigma 2 is less than 0 right ok. When sigma 1 is positive and sigma 2 is positive sigma 1 minus sigma 2 will be lesser than sigma 1 or sigma 2 because I am subtracting two positive numbers. Ok. So, whichever is greater will be the value of maximum stress there 1 half of that maximum stress sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 here 
okay the sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 the maximum value of these tau max would be the maximum value of sigma 1 or sigma 2 okay. Similarly if sigma 1 is less than sigma 2 and the same conditions are satisfied it will be 1 half of sigma 2 absolute value of sigma 2 okay. On the other hand if sigma 1 is positive if sigma 1 is greater than 0 and sigma 2 is less than 0 then sigma 1 minus sigma 2 will be the maximum value because they are of opposite signs. So, they will add up rather than they getting subtracted okay. So, now it will be 1 half maximum of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 okay. So, with this results now we are in a position to plot the yield surface let us assume that this is sigma 2 axis this is sigma 1 axis okay and I know that kappa from uniaxial uh, stress condition is sigma y by 2 okay. So, basically if I do a uniaxial test the yield stress is sigma y I can do a uniaxial stress in one direction or two direction then the yield stress will remain same as sigma y okay. So, from that argument I get this point as sigma y and similarly this point would be sigma y okay along the two direction okay where the other component of stress is 0 okay. When both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are positive and have the same magnitude then also I will get sigma y as my state of stress the failure state of stress okay. So, I get it I get this point in equal biaxial state of stress will still fail at sigma y okay because sigma 1 is less than sigma 2 until sigma 2 reaches sigma y and I have both of them go in the same rate also both reach sigma y simultaneously and that will be a failure scenario here okay so that will be sigma y then. I did not distinguish between tension and compression because only the direction of the shear is going to change between tension and compression okay that is why there is absolute value coming in here okay. So, in compression also I will have the same sigma y as the failure stress and sigma y as the failure stress there and the ends this will be the failure envelope in tension and tension tension and compression compression zones okay. What happens in tension compression zone? Basically let us look at a special case wherein I was interested in pure shear, pure shear is a case wherein sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 minus sigma 2 equal to tau right wherein I add tension and compression coming in, in the different directions okay. So, since sigma the magnitude of tension and compression are same that will represent a 45 degree line here represent this 45 degree line here where the sigma 1 is minus sigma 2 okay. In that line you know that the maximum stress that it can reach is sigma y by 2 okay. The maximum stress that it can reach here is sigma y by 2 maximum stress that it can reach here is this is sigma y by 2 and this is sigma y by 2 okay and I know that the equation that governs when sigma 1 is positive and sigma 2 is positive is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 equal to sigma y okay. In other words this equation is of the form x equal to sigma y plus y okay. So, the equation of this line is what I represented here it is this line represents sigma 1 minus sigma 2 equal to sigma y. Similarly, if sigma in the other re, in the other region where sigma 1 is positive and sigma 2 is negative the absolute value would be sigma 2 minus sigma 1 equal to sigma y and the answer will be this line. This line is what that equation represents okay. So, the Tresca criteria the failure surfaces in the form of an hexagon okay okay. 
So, the failure surface for Tresca criteria is in the form of an hexagon. Now, we have estimated the failure surface that is the stress state is within this region, it is safe. If it is on the surface, it has begun to yield. It turns out that no material can cross this surface and still it is not possible for a stress state to cross this surface since it is a yielding surface okay it is not possible for the materials to cross the surface okay so this is an unsafe region but technically there cannot exist stress states which are, which are in this region in this region there can be no stress states in this or in this region there can be no stress states possible okay next what we want to see is we want to see in what plane the body would have failed okay we have found the failure stresses but how will the body fail is what we want to see next okay so let's take the example of a uniaxial tension okay surface of failure in the body okay that is we said that when tau max occurs it will fail right now what we are interested is finding that surface where tau max occurred so that will determine the surface of failure okay for example if i take a uniaxial bar a bar subject to a uniaxial state of stress a bar subjected to uniaxial state of stress sigma sigma okay you know that from the Mohr circle this is the shear stress this is normal stress this is where you connect with what you have done previously okay for this the Mohr circle is you cannot forget what you have done previously would be like that and you know that 0 and sigma are the maximum and minimum normal stresses in the Mohr circle and tau max is sigma by 2 that we found also occurs at a 90 degree orientation from this plane a 90 degree orientation the Mohr circle corresponds to a 45 degree rotation. So, basically if I segment this by a 45 degree cut I know that the shear stress here is maximum okay and hence this body will fail by shearing along this region it will shear off along this region. Okay, shear off along that region. So, the failure surface would look like some region is going to slide like that. Okay. Now, what happens is once it becomes to slide, it shows large deformations. So, what called as necking occurs, okay, necking occurs and hence the final failure surface of a body in tension for example for a material like steel would look like this would look like this okay where there will be considerable deformations and it the cross section area would reduce significantly and this is called as necking is called as necking okay now this is how a brittle material will fail okay now let's look at another case where i subjected this bar to a torsional moment subject to this bar to a torsional moment okay I fix this let me look up a case when I subject a bar fix this in subjected to a torsional moment t okay now when I subject this to a torsional moment the maximum shear stress occurs where maximum shear stress is in the plane of the problem okay so the state of stress is 
Prussia 0 0 0 0 0 tau 0 tau 0 for example ok and the most helpful for this is sigma of n tau of n shear stress it will be a circle there ok where well, this is tau this is minus tau this is tau max ok in the given plane the maximum shear stress occurs. So, what will happen is here the surface when I twist it these are the surface which are in torsion which are in shear so they will just shear off like this ok in torsion what will happen is the surface will shear off like that ok that is if the shear stress were to go on the failure theory ok. Now, let us say this material was like a chalk piece which is not ductile, but it is a brittle material ok. Then what happens say maximum normal stress or the Rankine failure criteria govern the failure ok. Then and let us say the material is weak in tension ok. Then what happens this stress is what is going to cause it to fail ok. Then the failure surface for this has to be at 45 degrees to to the direction of this shear right. So, if I take an element here if I take this element in from here and blow it up I will have shear stresses acting like this and this diagonal this diagonal is going to be in tension and this diagonal is going to be in compression ok. Since this diagonal is in tension and the material is weak in tension cracks will develop along this direction this will be the crack this is tension diagonal this is the compression diagonal ok. So, the crack will develop perpendicular to the tension direction because tension causes the surfaces to be cracked ok. If I add tension along this direction the crack will open up like this ok that is it will be parallel to the compression direction compression diagonal direction ok. So, this you know from Mohr's circle that this tension and compression occurs at 45 degree inclination to the axis of the beam ok. So, now let us take a chalk piece and check whether this thing happens ok. So, I have this chalk piece so I am twisting it you can see that the failure envelope is roughly 45 degrees failure envelope here is roughly 45 degrees ok. So, that shows that whatever we are studying makes some practical sense also ok. So, what we have seen in this lecture is we have formulated the failure theory ok. We have said that the failure theories can be stress based or strain based, but stress based failure theories are preferred the reason we saw and then we saw that there are two kinds of materials which are hydrostatic pressure sensitive and hydrostatic pressure insensitive materials and hydrostatic pressure sensitive materials behave like a ductile failure show a ductile kind of a failure or the shear stress will go on the failure mode whereas, in brittle material the normal stresses or a combination of normal and shear stresses will go on the failure mode and we saw one example of uh, hydrostatic pressure insensitive failure criteria or the yield criteria which is the maximum shear stress or Tresca criteria and we saw what the failure surface is and how to determine the surface along which the body will fail ok. We will repeat the same things for the other four uh, failure theories that we were we want to study as part of this course ok. Thank you.